Welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about health insurance. First, we're gonna talk. We're gonna go over some of the key provisions in the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Uh, it's oftentimes referred to as ACA or uh, colloquially called the Obamacare. Uh, then we're going to talk about different types of private insurance. Uh, most private insurance are provided through employers or group insurance. Um, you can also get um, your own private health insurance policy. And then we're going to talk about public insurance. These are offered by the U.S. government. These include Medicare, which are for individuals over age of 65, and Medicaid, which is based on an individual's income uh, qualification. And then finally, there are also children's insurance program uh, and military programs such as the veterans uh, health insurance program. It is uh, almost 10 years ago uh, that the, uh, more than 10 years ago that the ACA was passed. And it is probably one of the most important piece of legislation when it comes to health insurance in the United States. Before the ACA, individual private health insurance was very expensive. Uh, most of the time, people who cannot get uh, health insurance through work will have to go without insurance. Uh, in addition to that, pre-existing condition was a huge concern for individuals. Uh, if you have pre-existing condition, you cannot get insurance or you can be denied coverage for your existing condition, pre-existing condition, even if you have health insurance. So you could have health insurance, but they would not pay for uh, health uh, care that is related to an, a condition that they deem pre-existing. And so how would that affect you as an individual before ACA? So let's say you had a, you were diagnosed with a, uh, ongoing illness. Uh, a very common one could be diabetes, uh, or other type of similar chronic disease. Um, if you change job and because you change your job, you have to get a new insurance, po uh, company and the new insurance company will consider your diabetic condition a pre-existing condition because you already had diabetes before you entered this insurance policy. So that's pre-existing. And so any diabetic care will not get covered under your new policy. So people sometimes are unable to change jobs simply because they cannot afford to change insurance companies. So that was a major concern for many Americans before the passage of ACA. Um, another thing that insurance companies may do is after you get sick and they pay for your care that one time and then they cancel your policy after that. Um, so any future health care will not get covered. Uh, since insurance was in, regulated state by state, policies and coverage can vary greatly for an individual. So once again, in order to change jobs or relocate for economic reason becomes very difficult before ACA. What does ACA do and what are some of the key provisions? So first and foremost, this is the concern of most Americans. So ACA eliminated uh, the concept of pre-existing condition. So applicants cannot be denied. Now they could be charged a higher premium potentially, but they cannot be denied because of pre-existing condition. Uh, the other is that they uh, created a marketplace so that individuals who are not employed or individuals whose employers do not provide health insurance can still find a way to obtain uh, health insurance at um, a affordable cost. So that's where the, the name of the act is called Affordable Care Act. Uh, they require all policies show on, uh, on the marketplace to cover uh, essential health benefits. Uh, the idea is that um, individuals will be able to have access to health care. Uh, it also um, re ensures that uh, there, if a, their claims are denied, there is a clearly detailed, uh, articulated um, appeal process, both internally and externally. So if they can get um, resolution by the insurance company on their own, there is a third party that they can use to help with the, the repeal process. They also help states um, to create help for individuals. So once again, it's there to help people with 
uh, problem. So if they have complaints and appeal, now they have uh, an advocate for them uh, instead of having to rely solely dealing with insur insurance companies on their own. Uh, they also required uh, insurance company to justify any premium changes. So uh, again, uh, pre-existing condition is not a good reason, but if they, their health care costs go up, then they could uh, increase their premium. They also encourage um, small businesses to offer health insurance by giving them tax credits. Um, they also, uh, another important um, provision is they remove lifetime caps. So in the past, um, the insurance company can say your for your entire life, um, if you spend more than X dollars, so it could be say $500,000 or a million dollars, anything above that would not be covered. Uh, that is eliminated. Again, uh, healthcare costs can be very expensive. So uh, the Affordable Care Act um, addresses some of the most important concern of consumers when it comes to health insurance. Uh, as a result, um, insurance coverage in America went up significantly. Uh, this is a survey from 2022, and it shows that, not surprisingly, uh, for older folks who, so older folks would be people 65 and over, majority of them are covered by public insurance, because that is Medicare. Uh, for uh, young adults, uh, so anyone below 65, most of it is covered by private insurance. Um, and not surprisingly, um, adults between 18 to 64 is the largest group that is uninsured. So for individuals under the age of 65, so again, this is the majority of working adults. Uh, their number one source of insurance coverage is employer sp sponsor plan. So they get insurance through the employers. Um, the plans can cover not just the individual, but it may also cover uh, their spouse and their children. Um, most employers pay part of the premium as, uh, as the benefit package. Uh, so for individuals, the employer-sponsored plans are usually the best option. Um, however, if you lose your job, um, there are two options. Uh, one is that you uh, most companies, um, in fact, this is a, a law that you require company to do, uh, is something called COBRA. So this is a short term. This is a uh, usually up to six months, uh, that you can um, continue on your existing insurance policy with the company, but you will have to pay the entire premium plus an administrative cost. So when you are employed, the employer oftentimes pay part of the premium. Uh, but if you start, if you are, if you lose employment, either be, uh, usually through a layoff, you can stay on the plan, but then you have to pay the entire premium, which can be significant and the administrative costs, which can also be significant. However, there is an alternative source uh, under ACA once you're unemployed. So either you are unemployed, you're not employed, or if you're self-employed, or if your employer do not provide insurance, you can find private insurance on the government health uh, market health marketplace. Um, so the website is healthcare.gov. Uh, so I encourage you to check it out. Um, and so remember that um, just because you are no longer employed, you still have access to health insurance. The insurance policy that you can purchase on healthcare.gov are private health insurance policy. So this is not government health insurance, it's a government marketplace that enables you to buy private health insurance. So now let's take a look at different types of insurance policies. Uh, one type of insurance policy is called indemnity plan. So again, the term can be confusing. So what this type of policy does is it reimburses you for either part or all of the expenses. Uh, so this is a fee for service type policy. Under this type of plan, uh, you can choose any provider you want. So whether it's a primary care or a specialist, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, what 
you need to do uh what you however the com the insurance company may have a limit on how much they pay so if your doctor charge a higher fee than what the insurance limit is you will have to pay the difference um so this uh, this one there's no restriction on who or which doctor you see however it has a limit on how much they will pay uh, another type of policy which is very popular is a managed healthcare plan so in here the insurance company dictates the type of doctor that they will cover so uh, a very common one is an hmo hmo stands for health maintenance organization so they will cover services that are approved by a doctor so in an hmo plan you have to have a primary care doctor and the primary care doctor will also then give you referrals to say yes this person has this condition and required to see a specialist and the primary care and with that referral then the insurance company will pay for the coverage for the specialist another type of managed health care plan is called ppo ppo stands for preferred provider organization uh, in this case you do not need a referral uh, however the list of providers are identified by the insurance company so the company uh, the company the, the insurance company dictates a list or they have a list of doctors, including specialists. And if you use the uh, a doctor within the list, then the services are covered. Each plan is different. Some plans allow you to use a doctor that is not in their organization. So as I said, that's why it's called an organization plan. Uh, however, they will only cover part of the cost if you use someone outside the organization. Premium is definitely one of the important factors to consider when you choose an insurance plan. But in addition to the premium, here are some of the factors that you also want to take into account. Uh, the first is deductible. Deductible is the amount that you must pay before the, com the insurance company pay for any coverage. So the, the deductible can be as low as $500, can be as high as $5,000. Uh, it's up to your own individual needs. So a lot of times the higher deductible will have a lower premium and a lower deductible with a higher premium. So if you have a $500 deductible, that means you have to pay the first $500 of healthcare costs. It can be anything from uh, uh, x-rays or a test or a doctor's visit. And then anything above $500, then you will get covered. If you have a $5,000 deductible, then the first $5,000 will not be covered by the insurance company. So it's important to take account that uh, and your personal savings, uh, whether or not you can afford a higher deductible, and how often do you go see a doctor? Uh, the other important consideration is out of pocket maximum. This is the most that you will need to pay for coverage uh, for service per year. So once you meet the maximum, then everything above that will get covered, even if it is a, uh, a service that they don't usually uh, include. Uh, copay is the uh, portion that you have to pay for each service. So a lot of times this is uh, printed on your insurance card. Uh, copay can be as low as $20 to $15. It can be as high as $60 or $100. And then reimbursement is what the company coinsurance is, the percentage that you must pay in addition to the deductible. So, uh, uh, for example, in a PPO, you may have a coinsurance to see a specialist that is out of your network, I mean, out of your organization. So let's say the coinsurance is 20%. That is not part of your deductible. So really read the fine print. It's important. I know it sounds a little bit confusing. So deductible is what you must pay before the insurance company pay anything. Coinsurance is depends on your policy. Some have no coinsurance, some do, but co coinsurance is not part of your deductible. So that will not get included in whatever the deductible amount is. However, coinsurance is part of the out-of-pocket maximum. So again, that depends on the policy. So pay special attention. The best thing is to talk to, if you're working for a company, 
uh, talk to the human resources um, benefit specialist. They'll be able to explain all these differences to you. If you're buying your insurance through a marketplace, make sure you talk to an agent and ask these specific questions. What are, are their coinsurance? Do those count? Um, what happened when you reach your out-of-pocket maximum? What would you still be responsible for? So in part of this class, even if you don't become an expert, you are now knowledgeable enough to ask the important questions. Next is reimbursement. This is what the insurance will pay for specific services. So a lot of times if you use uh, a provider that is in network, uh, they will they will charge the customary amount and therefore the insurance will cover the entire service fee. If you use someone who is out of network, their charge may be higher than what the insurance set as customary and the insurance will not pay the additional amount. So in terms of your uh, what is something that you need to decide to choose what policy and the the selections by policy. Typically, it's a trade-off between how much you are willing to pay and your flexibility to choose your physician and the premium. So again, the higher the deductible, the lower the premium. The less flexibility, meaning you are using just in-network provider, the lower the premium. The other thing to take into account is your own personal healthcare needs. So if you have a chronic disease and you know that you will see a doctor on a regular basis, you may choose a higher premium that has a lower deductible because you know that you will use up that deductible, deductible every year. Uh, on the other hand, if you are healthy and you don't have any uh, health concern, you can choose a higher deductible so that your premium is lower and in those unfortunate few years that you may have a health care need, you can just afford to pay the higher deductible. Uh, obviously, uh, your preference for doctors and your location um, is also a factor. If you live in a place where the insurance do not have a preferred provider, then you may need to you may want to use a fee for service plan that does have doctors close to you. Um, whether or not you can, they can cancel you and you can cancel them and the renewable, those are also options that you want to take into account. Uh, most uh, companies uh, have uh, options for changes for life-changing events such as having a baby or getting divorced or getting married uh, or if your spouse lose their job. So those are major life events. Again, the best place to, to get information and help is your company's uh, human resources benefits department. It's also important to take into account other coverage, particularly mental health coverage. Uh, mental health is as important as physical health. So a policy that provides adequate, adequate uh, mental health is important to keep in mind. We'll pause the video here for insurance. Um, this In the next video, we'll continue the coverage of insurance, but we're going to focus on public health insurance, including Medicare and Medicaid. See you soon.